Hey you guys, before I got into the video, I just wanted to talk briefly about my new ebook, Zodiac Signs Sex Language. Whether you're looking to improve your sex life and your dating life, or if you're just looking to expand your knowledge about astrology, this is definitely the right book for you. This book is meant to help you improve your sex life, your, your dating life, and your love life, your relationships, and to spice it up in the bedroom if need be, um, or to just once again, you know, help you learn more about astrology. So if you're interested in any of these things, if you're interested in learning in learning about the different love languages and the different sex languages of the zodiac signs, definitely look into getting this book, Zodiac Signs Sex Language, written by me, edited by me, and designed by me, Lamar Townsend. So you can purchase this uh, ebook on my website, lamartownsendtarot.com, or you can purchase it on Amazon, on the Amazon Kindle ebook store, all right, or just amazon.com. All right, into the video we go. Thank you for listening and watching. The three stages of Scorpio, the scorpion, the eagle, and the phoenix. Now, I am not a Scorpio, but just because I'm not a Scorpio does not mean I can't talk about Scorpios. My Pluto and my Venus are both in Scorpio. No, that doesn't mean I'm a Scorpio, but it means I have Scorpio energy. Not to mention, Pluto is one of the most dominant planets in my chart. So, the three stages of Scorpio, the scorpion, the eagle, and the phoenix. Now, let's also say this, you know, no Scorpio is going to be at, you know, uh, a specific phase or a specific point in their life, okay? You know, all Scorpios go through these phases at, you know, different stages of their life. You know, someone may have gone through the eagle phase at a young age, you know, whereas, you know, maybe someone else went through the eagle phase at an older age. You know, it, it really depends, you know, on life circumstances and things like that. So, but let's get right into it. Okay, Scorpion. Um, so the Scorpion is the first stage of a Scorpio, uh, Scorpio's life. And the Scorpion is considered the lowest uh, on the totem of the stages of Scorpio. Now, Scorpion is uh, highly reactive to their environment. Think of a literal Scorpio, okay, or a Scorpion, all right? Highly reactive, you know, um, very temperamental, all right? Um, and can tend to lose control of their emotions, can tend to lose control um, in general, all right? So uh, the Scorpion stage is, you know, and like I was saying, you know, I have my Venus in Scorpio and my Pluto in Scorpio, so naturally I will go through these own stages in my life, and I've seen these stages play out in my own life, and I would definitely say that at this point probably, especially with my Venus, I'm probably at the Phoenix stage, but moving on, let's stay on topic with the Scorpion stage. So the Scorpion stage is, you know, we find the Scorpio in its um, natural, unaware, uh, you know, habitat, meaning unaware of its effect on people, unaware of its um, volatility with its emotions and its, um, at times, inability to gain control over its emotions. Uh, the Scorpion or the Scorpio at the Scorpion stage can have a tendency to sting uh, for no reason or sting when maybe stinging isn't necessary or isn't the best viable option. All right. Um, this is, you know, often where the Scorpio will cut people out of their life, you know, for uh, no reason or over trivial things. Okay. Now that's not to say that, you know, Cutting people out of our life isn't necessary, you know, it's totally necessary, but sometimes a Scorpio At this stage, you know, if the scorpion stage will cut people out where that, you know, otherwise they could have You know if they have the certain skills necessary to gain control over their emotions gain control over the situation in a non-manipulative way They could actually work it out. All right. I um, mean it could actually be a really really beneficial relationship for them now, you know don't be sad over any casualties that happen in this stage, okay? Because the eagle stage is where, you know, you have the chance to, you know, right your wrongs. But the scorpion stage is the stage where, you know, the Scorpio is in its un... It's, the Scorpio is untamed. The Scorpio is has yet to gain control over their anger, gain control over their need to prove something all right um their need to um destruct their you know opponent or their you know whoever they're going up against 
Whereas, you know, we move into the Eagle stage. Whereas, you know, the, the Scorpio at this point has gone through, you know, a couple things. You know, they've learned certain lessons that, you know, uh, ab about betrayal, you know, about, you know, fighting certain battles and understanding that not all battles are actually worth fighting. The Scorpio at the Eagle stage has, you know, matured. All right. The Scorpio at the Eagle stage has learned their necessary lessons to be able to actually, you know, m move on to this point, to, to level up to this point, right? Um, so literally, it's like a, it's like a spiritual esoteric level from the scorpion to the eagle to the phoenix. So when the scorpio gets to the eagle phase, the scorpio starts to feel a bit different. You know, things that maybe used to bother the scorpio don't bother the scorpio as much anymore, or... You know, Scorpio just isn't as emotionally phased, you know, emotionally reactive to certain situations as they used to be. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, um, there may be residual energies of the Scorpion phase, you know, that the eagle Scorpio has to kind of work through. Um, but, you know, once, you know, the Scorpio has made a smooth transition into the eagle stage, this Scorpio can be very much more peaceful, much more a little bit predictable in their emotions and their reactions to things. All right, um, much more level-headed, all right, for sure, and definitely more sure of themselves. Now, the interesting thing about the Scorpio and the Scorpion stage is that the reason why it's so reactive is that, you know, it, it's it's afraid a lot of the times. It's unsure a lot of the times. It's, it's you know, um, unaware of it, its effect, you know, and how actually it, it its mere presence causes other people to be afraid. That's very powerful. And it's at the ego stage that the Scorpio starts to really understand all of these kind of energies that they possess within themselves. Now, the Scorpio at the ego stage, you know, is also one who you don't want to mess with. <laughs> at a Scorpio at any stage you don't want to mess with, but the ego stage, they are much more calculating. They're much more, you know, um... They're less in their Mars energy and they're more in their Pluto energy. All right. Now, if you know anything about Pluto, you know that Pluto rules the subconscious. It rules what lies hidden beneath the surface. It rules, you know, the deep, dark truths. It rules transformation and evolution. So, like I was saying, the Scorpio at the Eagle phase understands that not all battles are worth fighting, you know, and not all battles are are worth fighting the way they were fought in the past. So at this stage, a Scorpio learns a new way of, of fighting, a new way of defending themselves, okay? Um, and it's typically one that is less reactive and more thoughtful, more calculating, more, you know, what is the best way to overcome this situation and still retain my power, you know, my, my individual inner power you know um the the scorpio at the ego stage is less willing to actually give their power over all right so whereas the scorpio at the scorpion stage you know is, is easily manipulated the scorpio at the ego stage not so much so i mean think about it the eagle is a very very dominant figure i mean first of all we don't see eagles that much at least not where i live so whenever you see an eagle you know it, it's 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 a beautiful thing. You have to kind of stop and look and watch them, you know, fly with grace and move about with grace. And it's just like, wow, it's very inspiring to see an eagle in action, period, you know. But an eagle is, is very calculating. An eagle is very smart, all right? So an eagle can see you from a mile away and all it has to do is swoop down and peck you or do whatever it needs to do to get you together I and mean, then it just kind of flies back up not having to get down to your your level you know or the person other person's level lower level and and fight the battle that way remember at this point it's about fighting uh, a battle in a different way and fighting different battles period all right you know like i was saying not all battles at this stage are actually worth fighting all right for example as a venus and scorpio you know, I've realized that, you know, not all battles are worth fighting in terms of dating, in terms of love, in terms of what I'm not happy about because Venus rules, you know, our passions. It rules, of course, romance, romantic relationships, but it also rules how we make our money, what we spend our money on. So, you know, at the ego stage, you no longer kind of resonate with, with, with what no longer works with you, right, or works for you or resonates with you. So for me, with my Venus and Scorpio being at the ego stage, what, what worked for me in the past in terms of maybe work and how I made my money, 
it doesn't work for me anymore. You know, at this stage, I'm very sure of myself. I'm very, you know, proud of my business that I built, you know, and, and it, it's sustaining, it's sustainable, you know, and, and I've gained the kind of skills to, to be able to sustain it, you know, um, on my own. So, and without fear or, you know, worry of what the future lies, you know. So, remember, at the Scorpion stage, there's a lot of fear involved, all right? So, um, but moving on to the, uh, eagle, the Phoenix stage, I'm sorry. So, the Phoenix stage, at this stage, the Scorpio has gained full control over their powers. The Scorpio has gained full control over themselves. So, they're no longer manipulated as they once were. Um, they're actually the manipulators all right and that doesn't you know sound so amazing but you know there's a lot to be said for people who can manipulate situations for the benefit of you know themselves or other people all right um and you don't have to do it in a in a cunning or or a conning way it's it's a more so utilizing your your powers kind of way <clears throat> and the phoenix is <laughs> Uh, the Phoenix is the the Scorpio at its most confident. The Phoenix is uh, the Scorpio at its most dominant. All right. At this point, the Pluto energy and the Mars energy are working together. They are aligned. They are balanced with one another. So the Scorpio is not leaning too far to the left with Pluto or too far to the right with Mars. Right. We're right here in the middle with the Phoenix stage. So. That alone is very powerful. Mars rules how we assert ourselves. You know, it rules, uh, it rules dominance. It rules going after what we want. So when a Scorpio knows what they want at this stage, nothing can stop them because they've learned all the lessons that they need to learn in order to manifest what they want in life. All right. Um, remember, Pluto is about the subconscious, and the subconscious, whether we believe it or not, can be a huge benefit or a huge detriment to us. You know, the subconscious is where we store a lot of our uh, negative self-talk or our positive self-talk. You know, um, the subconscious is where we store a lot of our fears and worries and things. But the Scorpio at the Phoenix stage is actually not afraid to look at their subconscious, you know, kind of look at what's stored in there, uh, get rid of anything that's not working for them, and, and retrain their subconscious to uh, attract what they want to them. Because the subconscious is the attracting center, all right? Uh, if there's negative in your subconscious, you can, you know, uh, speak all day, you know, positivity, and think all day positivity. But if you have a deep-seated belief that you're not worthy of what you want, then you're not going to attract what you want. And the Scorpio at the Phoenix stage understands this. So, the Scorpio at the Phoenix, the Phoenix stage will remove itself from anything and anyone who brings their energies down, who, you know, plants any negative uh, thoughts or negative self-talk into their subconscious, okay? So, the Scorpio at the Phoenix stage, you know, um, is more likely to uh, distance themselves from people who are negative or people who kind of don't resonate with them and don't vibrate at a certain frequency uh, because we are who we surround ourselves with. And the Scorpio at the Phoenix stage totally understands this. The Scorpio at the Phoenix stage is actually uh, able to stand on their own. All right. Um, I would say at the Eagle stage, they could probably stand on their own. But the Eagle stage, you know, they're kind of gaining their footing a little bit. They're still kind of gaining their wings a bit. But the Phoenix stage is, you know, the Scorpio at their greatest. So like I was saying, we, you know, a Scorpio can reach the eagle and the phoenix stage at any point in their life you know it's all about going through the lessons learning the lessons you know going through you know the necessary experiences positive and negative to uh overcome certain obstacles to overcome certain karmic uh situations that the scorpio may be a a attached to right so that's pluto so uh but you know karma is also attached to saturn but that's a whole different story but you know this is a little bit about the Scorpio and the three stages of Scorpio, the Scorpion, the Eagle, and the Phoenix. So, if you would like to elaborate, please contact me on my website, lamartownsendtarot.com. I would love to read for you. I do birth chart readings, psychic tarot readings, and so much more. I do individual birth chart readings, compatibility birth chart readings, regular compatibility where, where I look at the overall compatibility, love compatibility where I focus more so on the love aspects such as the Venus, the Moon, the Mars, the seventh and the fifth house between you and, and another person, and also the aspects, uh, the trines and 
the conjunctions and things like that, um, the oppositions in your chart as well. Um, I also do business birth chart readings. I do birth chart readings for children and so much more. I also do uh, different types of psychic tarot readings, phone and Skype, which are a bit more expensive. I also do a video where I record myself doing your reading and email it back to you. I do email and Instagram and Facebook and so many different other type of, types of ways of reading. So if you would like a reading from me, contact me on my website, lamartownsendtarot.com. Otherwise, check out the rest of my services. Please like this video, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the bell next to the subscribe button, I believe, so that you get a notification whenever I upload a new video. Also, please like me on my social media or follow me on my social media. Like me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Lamar Townsend official or just type in Lamar Townsend Tarot in the search bar. And also please uh, follow me on my Instagram at Lamar Townsend where I post daily uploads of, you know, you know daily tarot cards of the day or oracle cards of the day and all those types of things. So I look forward to connecting with you and hearing from you. Okay. And I'll catch you in the next video. Namaste, love and light. Have you been wanting to get a reading from me? Well, it's easy. Let's go through it together. So all you do is you visit my website, lamartownsendtarot.com, and you can visit the site on your computer or on your phone, and you click the store button right here at the top of the page, and here are all my services that I offer. I do candle offerings and all different types of birth chart readings and psychic tarot readings, messages from your spirit guides, and so much more. So you click the one that you want. You click the pay with PayPal button. And it'll take you to the PayPal page where you can pay for your reading. Now, you'll hear from me within 24 hours, you know, for your reading confirmation. And then I'll get your reading back to you within... 48-hour period usually you know it's you know a day or less okay so I look forward to reading for you thank you for your support